Right, welcome everyone to the Revit 2024 Level 1 training course. So before we dive into the nine modules that we will be covering in this course, let's first have a jump and in straight into the software and get a feel for what it is that we're going to be learning. So I like to call this a test drive. And what we'll do is I'm going to explain to you step by step how to create basic elements for a basic model in Revit so that you get a feel of the environment that we will be working in. So to do this, click on the new button from the home screen here in Revit under models. Make sure not to select new family, but a new model. And then from your template files, select the one that says architectural template. Now, if you do not see these templates, make sure that you have followed the instructions for the prerequisites for this course by installing Revit 2024 and then also installing the localized content packs. We are using the New Zealand content pack for Revit, but you could also be using the Australian content packs or others. So once that is all done, we're going to select the architectural template and we're going to be creating a new project. So once I click OK, I just wait a second or two for my new project to initialize and we can see that we've got our um, project screen active. Now, during the modules of this course, we'll be explaining in more detail how everything works. For now, forget about everything else and just follow me step by step. Right, so I'm going to start to create a new grid element here, a grid system. So I clicked on the grid tool and now my ribbon has changed. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the right and click towards the left. Notice that when I move my cursor um, close to the same vertical position as the start point, that it will snap to a horizontal um, plane. So once I've done that, it created my first grid item. Now, without doing anything else or pressing any buttons or clicking anywhere, just click on this button here that says pick lines and enter an offset value here of 5,000. We are working in a metric system, so this will be 5,000 millimeters, also equal to 5 meters. Next, I'm going to select towards the underside of the previous grid, and I'm going to left click once. Once that is done, I'm going to repeat the process to create a third grid. Now that that's completed, I'm going to press escape twice, so twice on the escape button. Right. I'm going to create a rectangular selection grid. So to do that, I'm going to move my cursor to the bottom right. I'm going to click and hold the left mouse button, and I'm going to move my cursor to the top left here, as indicated on the screen, and release the left mouse button. Once it's done, you can see these grid elements are selected. And I'm going to move my cursor to any one of them until I see the move icon. You see the icon changing, and I'm going to click hold the left mouse button, drag the mouse so that the grids are more or less centered, and then release. So click, hold, drag, and release. OK, now we've got our horizontal grids. To create my vertical grids, I'm going to click on the grid tool again. I'm going to make sure the line tool is active. And we're not going to use an offset right away, because I, I first want to start with my initial grid. And I start by clicking at the bottom and following the same principles before I select that point that is horizontally equal to the start point, but moving that upwards in the y direction. Once it's placed, I'm going to press Escape twice. And then I'm going to double click inside the grid. Make sure you don't click the grid head, but inside where the text is located. Use the mouse wheel button to scroll in and out if necessary. And double click to change that 4 to a capital A. All right. Now that we've got that done, we're going to create the remaining three um, vertical grids. So similar as before, I'm going to use the pick lines tool and I'm going to enter a distance there of 5,000 millimeters. I press enter once I've entered that value. And then again, just like before, I'm going to click close to the right hand side of grid A and then you'll see it automatically creates grid B and it creates grid C when I repeat that process. Press escape twice and the operation is complete. Now, I'd like to extend these grid lines a little bit out. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select grid 1 here, or grid 2, or grid 3, doesn't matter. And I'm going to move that grid point out a little bit. And then again, I'm going to select all of these grids, and I'm going to move them slightly 
more towards the center between these four elevation markers that you see on my screen. Also, I'd like to select this grid here and I'm going to use the grip point at the top and drag this out a little bit so that I've got a bit more space there for future annotations that I'm going to be placing. Notice that there are different grips on the grids and if you accidentally select the wrong one, just press Ctrl Z to undo your last command and make sure that you select the correct grid grip item when performing these actions. Again, we'll be explaining everything in detail in the following modules for now, we just want to see how it works, what it looks like, and get a feel for the software before we actually dive into it. Okay, so now that we've got a grid system, we want to start creating some basic geometry. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to create some walls. But before we create walls, let's just look at the elevation properties that's already set up. In other words, we're going to access from the project browser here. We're going to click on that plus button next to elevations. And let's just start with, let's say, the east elevation. So we open that up, and that's what we see. We see our three grids, and we can see these level markers. Now, I'm going to do the same as I did with the grids. I'm going to select on the level, mar level marker. And I'm going to drag that grip point so it extends beyond my first grid line. And I'm going to do the same over here, making sure that I carefully select the grip point so that I can stretch that level marker out a bit. Then I'm going to select any one of my grids and I'm going to do the same there so that I've got a nice clear view of my grids and my levels. Next, I am going to change the elevation for level one. Currently, you can see that's at four meters height. That's a bit too high for what we require. So I'm going to change that to 2,200 millimeters. All right. Or if we wanted that to be a different level, we could make that a different level. Um, yes, actually, let's make that 2,750. That's better. OK, let's leave it like that. All right. Now, since we've activated this east elevation, it's opened up a new tab here at the top in my project views. So we can use these tabs to switch between the currently open views that we have. If I wanted to jump to another view I would that is not already open, I would select it here in my project browser. Again, all things that we will explain in the future modules. Now that we've got our grids here, and again, I just like to position this a little bit in the center. Uh, we can start creating some wall items. So I'm going to click on the wall tool. We're not going to change anything or adjust any parameters on the walls except for the connections for the top and the bottom. Um, and then we're going to just start drawing them in. So you can see here the base constraint is level zero. Change the top constraint here to level one. All right. Next, we're going to start here at the grid intersection A1. So when I move my cursor to the intersection, we see that there's a grip point that shows a little cross there that's telling us it's picking up that intersection snap. We're going to left click once and release the mouse button. All right. Now, as I move my mouse, I can see the projection of that wall being drawn wherever my mouse cursor is pointing. Remember, I'm not holding in the left mouse button. I clicked and released at the start point. Next, I'm going to move it towards the intersection of grid line C1, and I'm going to left click again and release the mouse button. So click and release. All right, and we're going to continue doing that around the grids here. So I click again on grid intersection C3, then again on A3, and we close the loop back on A1. When that's done, you can press escape twice. Now, if you use your mouse wheel to scroll into the location and note that it will scroll towards the pointer location, you can see that Revit has created these walls as four separate walls, but has already created the fillets and the um, filling between these, the joining between these walls for us. This particular wall has got several layers. You can see there's one, two, three, four layers in this wall, and we'll talk about that a bit later. But for now, just note what is happening. It's actually created the geometry for us, and it's already created those joints. Now, we can start to view things in 3D. So here at the top in the Quick Access Toolbar, just click on the default 3D View button, and voila. You've got your first 3D model. It's very basic and very simple and not super impressive, but it was very easy to set up. And you can see what we are dealing with here. Now, notice that as I select on a wall here in my 3D view, that I'm able to actually click and drag this wall by holding in the mouse button this time. So if I do that and we go back here to level one, 
notice that this wall has moved away from grid line A. That means that these elements are parametrically linked. So if I move something in elevation view or a 3D view or a section view or in plan view, it's going to move everywhere in any every other view. So all these elements are connected in a parametric way. We can extend this parametric behavior. And again, something we're going to cover in the modules that are to come. Now let's add some other features to our very basic model here. Let's start by creating a floor. So we're going to choose from the floor tool here. We're going to say, let's select architectural. Now you'll notice the ribbon has changed. And what we would like to do here is to create a rectangle. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to select the outsides of the wall corners. That's all. Once it's done, just click the accept button. Now that we've created that, let's view it in 3D. And voila, we've got a floor. You can see the floor has been created there at the bottom of the walls. Let's select all of these walls and I'm doing this in my 3D view and I'm clicking them one by one, but I'm also holding in the control button. So I select the first wall by simply left clicking. Then I hold in the left control button and I click on the second wall when it's highlighted. I do the same for the third wall, still holding the control button and left clicking. And I do the same for the fourth wall. Control button, left click. Now I've got four walls selected here. And what I want to do is I want to extend these walls to the bottom of this floor slab that we've created. And I want to add some foundations to that. Those foundations will, foundations will be at a lower level. So we're going to say here, let's change the base offset from level zero, which is at the bottom, to a lower value. How do we do that? We type in a value that is lower than zero, such as minus 750. All right. And when I move my cursor back into the screen, the model will actually update, as you can see there. Great. Now that we've done that, Let's go to the Structure Ribbon tab and let's click on Wall Foundation. And all we have to do is to pick the walls that we want to add the foundation to. You don't have to hold the Control button when we click the walls now, since we are picking them one by one. And when we're done, you can either press Escape twice or you can right click and choose Cancel twice. All right. Now we've created our walls that extend below the slab and we've created the foundations. But I noticed that my floor slab is actually um, intersecting with a the wall there, which we probably don't want. So I might want to bring that back to either the first or the middle layer of the wall or the inside. In this case, we'll just bring it towards the inside of the wall. Now, notice that when I am moving my cursor on the screen, I can actually select the slab here by just moving the cursor onto the face of the slab. This might not always be the case, um, especially when you're working in a 2D view, such as a plan view here. So I'm currently in my level zero view. And if I move my cursor onto the slab, you can see it highlights in cyan color there to indicate the boundary of the slab. This is because I have got the option select elements by face switched on. If I switch it off and I click here, nothing happens. If I switch this on again and I move my cursor into the screen, then I can select the floor. So this is a very important toggle switch that you need to set. Select elements by face or don't select elements by face. In my case, it's switched on. So if you switch yours on, you will experience a similar behavior. Now, since we're in the level zero view again, and I've got the floor selected, you'll notice that the ribbon has changed. And it gives me a contextual ribbon with commands available for editing the geometry of this floor slab. So I'm going to click on Edit Boundary, and I'm going to click and drag these lines to the inside of the wall. So again, left click when it's highlighted, hold the button in, drag it towards the right, and release it when it snaps to the wall. OK, again, I'm going to left click, hold in the mouse button, move my mouse to the left, and you can feel that it's snapping to these lines, um, these feature lines of the wall. And once I hit the in inner wall, then I release. And I'm going to do the same here at the bottom. If you make a mistake and actually accidentally place it in the wrong location, no problem. Just click it again and drag it into position. All right. When you're ready, click on the Finish Edit Mode. And now if we go back to our 3D view, you can see that we have updated our model. OK, great. Let's add a roof to our very basic model. Now, to add a roof, 
we want to access the top level, which in this case is level one. It wasn't available here as an open view because we haven't opened it before. We're doing it now for the first time. Now to add the roof, we are going to go to the architecture ribbon tab and we're going to click on the roof dropdown and we're gonna select roof by footprint. Okay, this is gonna be a simple roof and we're gonna create it by using the pick tool and we're gonna specify an offset of 350 millimeters. Okay, so I selected the pick tool and I typed in 350, I pressed enter next to offset and now I'm gonna click to create the roof edge lines on the outsides of those walls. Notice I press escape again twice after this command to make sure that it's cleared before I continue. Now, if we select accept and we go to a 3D view, we can see that a funny cone-shaped roof has been created. This is not really what I want, so I'm gonna go back here to level one and when I've got my roof selected, I'm gonna choose edit footprint. And what we wanna do here is we wanna say that this line and this line here does not define slope. However, this line and this line does define the slope, but I wanna change these slopes to 26 degrees. So I'm gonna edit those slopes and put in 26 degrees. How did I select both lines at once? Just the same as before, left click ones, holding the control button and left clicking again on the other slope line or roof edge line, and then changing the properties. Once it's done, click on accept or finish. And now if we go to the 3D view, we can see that we've created that roof element. Nice. The final thing left to do is to take this wall and attach it to the top of that roof. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna click on the wall. I'm gonna choose attach top or base, and then I'm gonna choose the roof. And look at that. And you can do the same on this side. So I'm gonna select the wall, I'm gonna choose attach top or base, I'm gonna click the roof and it's done. You can choose to do the same for these walls as well on the sides just to make sure that it cleans up nicely. And I'm gonna do the same this side, although it doesn't appear to be uh, incomplete or not attaching properly, it won't because I didn't do it before. Now it's done. So we can see there is our little house that we have just built, excellent. One final thing, we're gonna create a quick view. So let's go to the view tab and let's choose section. When you choose on section, you're gonna click once left, release the mouse button, move your cursor across and then click again. Now you can see we've created the section view tool. And if I click anywhere outside of it to deselect it, I can then double click on the head here and it's gonna open up a generated section view for us. I might want to clean this up a bit by dragging these grids down like we did before and maybe to select these levels and clear them up again. Notice when I click a selecting the wall and not the level, I can move my cursor to the where the level is, press the tab button on the keyboard until it's highlighted and then select it. Or I can switch off the select elements by face tool so that it doesn't pick up this wall here in the back and then I can do the same thing. Look at that, and now we've got a nice view. If we don't wanna see this scope box here, we can switch that off, and this is button down here, hide the crop region, and there we go. Very, we, very quickly, we've now created our basic Revit model with some views, a, sh um, a section view, and our 3D view, and it's as simple as that. Of course, we're not being, we wouldn't be able to build something off of this, but this kind of gives you a rough feeling of what it is like working in Revit. Parametric, easy, fast, component-based. Okay, I hope to see you in the next module.